Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is a 748th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Straight away, you'll see that this map is um, the Thracian Foothills map. Um, very tactical, very strategic. Um, we've played on this map a couple of times before, and we always seem to have really good battles on here. Now, I think at this time on Rome Total War, I might be the only player who ever hosts on this map. But, uh, as I said before, many years ago, this was a very popular map. If you look at all the ups and downs, all the slopes, rises, and things like that, it is a very tactical and strategic map. That's why this map was so popular many years ago. As I say, um, probably now I'm the only person that hosts on this map. But, as I say, back in the day, it was a very popular map. And as you can see, it's very steep. The hills are very, very steep here. But if you look carefully, you'll see that there's no real advantage to either team here right from the beginning of the battle. There's not really a, an advantage here. So yes, it is a hilly map. It's a hilly strategic tactical map. But there's no real advantage to, uh, to either team here. So that's what makes this map, I, I think, quite special, actually. And we've had some really great um, battles on here. Just look, look at the steepness of those hills. I mean, um, as I say, very tactical, very strategic. And you can see tactics and strategies evolving on this map the more we play on it. And this is going to be a great battle for you to watch. 40k, no rules. Okay, so it's a 40k, no rules battle. And our first teammate is Brotherhood member Lando. Now, Lando's got 10 infantry and 10 cavalry okay 10 infantry 10 cavalry quick look at the upgrades you'll see he's got seven upgrades and experience stripe gold shield gold attack on his urban cohorts so make no mistake that makes them serious infantry there and he's got eight upgrades on his cavalry two experience stripes gold shield gold attack so that's a pretty solid roman army there and we know land is one of the most aggressive attacking players on rome total war um, and there you are, he's got his old school armoured cavalry general. Remember, up to about 13, 14 years ago, we all used to have this as our Roman general before most of us switched to an infantry general. So this is definitely old school, old fashioned there, bringing that armoured cavalry general. So as I say, Lando, very aggressive, very attacking, as we all know. Okay, um, our next teammate is Brotherhood member Aurelius. Now, Aurelius has got seven pikes, three archers, two cataphracts, two companion cavalry, one chariot, two elephants, and two light cavalry. A very diverse army here. Now, if we have a look at the upgrades on his pikes, one, two, three, four, fully upgraded pikes there. Okay, so it's fully upgraded pikes. And just look at the length of those pikes that the enemy troops have got to fight down to kill the man on the other end. And just look at the steepness of the hills here. It, those men look like they're almost going to fall off the edge of the uh, the hill there. It's so steep. Quick look at the upgrades on his uh, cataphracts there. You'll see he's got eight upgrades on his cataphracts, two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Remember we call those the tanks of the ancient world because they're armoured from head to toe. And then he's got his light... I think it's light Greek cavalry there. Yeah, that's light Greek cavalry, fast moving. You'd be surprised on how tough it is as they move around the battlefield hitting targets. Then he's got his elephants. Now he's he's gone for the lesser elephants here. He hasn't gone for the armoured elephants. He's gone for the next elephants down. But they've still got 12 hit points. Big fear factor. And you can see they've got archers on the back of the elephants there shooting into enemy troops. And then he's got companion cavalry here. Um, to complement his cataphracts and if you notice they've got eight upgrades on as well so a very diverse Seleucid army there I think for Aurelius okay our next teammate is someone who's called himself OTD Chimrizig but is in fact Scorpion King SR now get ready for this Scorpion King has got ten artillery eight cataphracts one elephant and a cavalry general so um, yeah very very heavy on the artillery there um, Scorpion King's been playing Rome Total War the same as myself since the first day it came out. So, uh, very, um, you could say, um, very much a veteran there. And, um, he always has liked Seleucid, the Seleucid faction. Many years ago, he used to play with this quite a lot. Oh my gosh, check out the upgrades on his cataphracts. Fully upgraded. Three experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Oh my gosh. 
that, uh, that's going to make those cavalry pretty tough. And he's gone for the armoured elephants here. Can you see? These are the elite elephants of Rome Total War, the armoured elephants. And their specifications are uh, a lot better than the uh, the normal elephants, if you like. And once again, he's got archers on the back there shooting arrows into enemy troops. But just look at the firepower. He's got ten artillery pieces. Oh my god, ten onagers there. Think of the fire pots that could come out of those. And our last teammate is myself, Spartan Commander. I've got twelve Spartans, four archers, three artillery, and one uh, fast-moving cavalry. So there's our team there. It should be a cracking battle for you to watch, and I hope you enjoy it. And here is the other team. We have Brotherhood member Man 2. Now Man 2's got 14 sacred bands, 3 elephants, and 3 cavalry. Quick look at the upgrades there. And you'll see he's got 8 upgrades on his sacred band spearman. That's 2 experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So make no mistake, that is serious infantry he's got there. A quick look at his cavalry here. And it looks like he's got a mixture there. Uh, he's got the long shield light cavalry, fast moving cavalry there for taking out archers and uh, getting around the back of tired infantry and charging into the rear of them. So they're quite useful. And I think he's got one heavy cavalry, yeah, one sacred band heavy cavalry unit there, which he has fully upgraded. Three experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on that. Uh, quick look at his elephants there. And he's gone for the armoured elephants. So once again, look at someone who's gone for the elite elephants here. Remember, you've got the, the next elephants down, which are cheaper. But these armoured elephants, they are um, potentially battle-winning troops, actually, those elephants there. So be interesting to see how Man 2 uses that Carthage army during the course of the battle. Okay, um, their next teammate is Brotherhood member Uther. Now, Uther's got five artillery, ten infantry, one incendiary pig, and two cavalry. So, um, let's have a quick look at... Uh, he usually brings serious infantry. Let's have a look at the upgrades on his urban cohorts. One, two, three, four, five. Fully upgraded urban cohorts. Oh my gosh, now you, the veterans watching this, you know how tough urban cohorts are with just gold shield, gold attack. But fully upgrading them there, that's going to make them kind of like super infantry. Yeah, I'm just counting again, like nine upgrades again. Three experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on all his urban cohorts. Quick look at his cavalry. There, he's just got two cavalry units there. And the upgrades are on to, oh, fully upgraded cavalry as well. So he's got fully upgraded infantry and fully upgraded cavalry there. So that's a pretty tough Roman army. Their next teammate is a Brotherhood member of Mad King. Now Mad King has got 13 pikes, 3 artillery and 4 cavalry. Okay, so 13 pikes, 3 artillery, 4 cavalry there. If we uh, get a close look there, try and see the upgrades on his um, troops there. Eight upgrades, two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his pikemen there. And just look at the length of those pikes that our men have got to fight down to kill the man on the other end. So um, that's a pretty formidable army of pikes there. And over here you'll see he's got his artillery there on the uh, on the hill. Um, covered by his um, cavalry. Quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. One, two, three, four, four. Fully upgraded companion cavalry. Remember, these guys got a massive nine charge bonus as well. So, um, and they are fully upgraded, as you can see there. So that's pretty tough cavalry. Okay, their last teammate is Brotherhood member Julius Caesar. Now he's got thirteen infantry, six cavalry, and one incendiary pig. Okay. And if we have a look at the upgrades, if I remember right, I think he's got mixed upgrades there. He's got gold shield, gold attack on his forward pilot shield units there. You move further back in his battle formation, yeah, he got seven upgrades. And experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack there. So um, that's a pretty good army. He usually brings serious cavalry. Let's have a count. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, fully upgraded Praetorian cavalry. Remember that lifts them out of the elite bracket into the super cavalry bracket. And there is the incendiary pigs. Now remember, this is a real unit back uh, used by the Romans back in the day where they used to cover the poor pigs in oil, set fire to them, and then the pigs used to run towards the enemy elephants and the screeching and screaming sound and the smell of the poor pigs burning used to make the enemy elephants run amok. Um, it was a very successful tactic, but of course very cruel to the pigs there. 
but uh, it'll be interesting to see if if we see any incendiary pigs ignited by elephants in this battle so you can see um, how effective or ineffective they are so there's the enemy team this should be a great battle for you uh, to enjoy and I hope you like it okay at this very very early stage of the battle here I just thought I'd show you a possible tactical move here can you see that Mad King's got his artillery there backed up by his fully upgraded companion cavalry well, what I'm thinking here, and, he's, and can you see that he's got his pikes over there for some reason, so I wonder if that was a team plan to capture that hill where Uther's on. But what I'm thinking here is you can see that um, Scorpion King's got his fully upgraded cataphracts here, and I'm just wondering whether it would be a good tactical move to take those cataphracts up the hill and then with a downhill charge bonus charge into the, the Macedonian artillery there and possibly take them out. I don't know what you, uh, what all of you think there, but I thought that was quite a good tactical move there. Now over here we know that Brotherhood member Lando is one of the most aggressive attacking players on Rome Total War. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's going to attack um, the enemy Carthage army that's in front of him here. And the way that he's moving forward here, it looks that's exactly what his intention is to attack the... Um, well upgraded Carthaginian army there and let's say Lando always very aggressive and attacking rather than come and join up on top of the hill with his teammates he's going to attack but over here as we said like you can see Scorpion King here's um, a battlefield awareness attack here now he he's going to attack the um, Macedonian artillery and probably take on that companion cavalry as well get ready for this and bang as he charges in there now you can see the fully upgraded companion cavalry um, counter-attack in there and that bang as they charge in there but remember if we look at this map can you see that the Seleucids of Scorpion King has got the downhill charge bonus and that means that anything attacking uphill look, has lost a lot of his charge bonus here so attacking uphill against um, well upgraded well these cataphracts are fully upgraded um, is always um, a bit of a, a difficult decision to make there because um, that's just, uh, you know, those fully upgraded cataphracts are really tough. Now, here you'll see that Aurelius is building a pike fence. If you notice there, can you see he's actually building a pike fence here? Now, can you think why Aurelius would be building a pike fence? Okay, so what he's building that fence for is to try and protect Scorpion King's 10 artillery units. Okay, remember Scorpion King's got no infantry. So, this is a good bit of teamwork here by Aurelius, erecting a um, pike fence there to stop the enemy troops being able to hit uh, the onagers of Scorpion King there. So I say a really good um, bit of teamwork there by Aurelius. Now over here you'll see that um, Lando is going all out to attack a man to Carthaginian troops there on that slope. But uh, over here, as we uh, just saw earlier, you can see Scorpion King. Remember those cataphracts, those Seleucid cataphracts are fully upgraded. And as I say, you can see there now that his cataphracts are actually fighting downhill those companion cavalry. Make no mistake, those companion cavalry are fully upgraded as well. But because they've got the disadvantage of fighting uphill and losing the bonuses, so many bonuses through fighting uphill there, look, it wouldn't surprise me if they if they actually routed. Now you can see the Macedonian general bringing his pikes over, so I'm thinking here Scorpion King's going to back his cataphracts off now, which he's going to do, there you go. He's going to uh, retreat his uh, cataphracts there, but he's done the job that he wanted to there. If you look, you'll see the Macedonian Onager crews have all been taken out. So that was a really good battlefield awareness cavalry attack there by Scorpion King to take out that uh, all those Onagers there of Macedon. So I say, really good move there. You'll see, meanwhile, while he was holding up, <clears throat> the Macedonians there. I've managed to get my Spartans up onto the hill there, and Aurelius has got a couple of his pike units there as well. So that's um, that's good news for us. Over here, you'll see Uther's captured this hill there and is moving his artillery forward. But as I said, over here, Lando, one of the most aggressive attacking players on Rome Total War. As I say, he's attacking, but look, can you see on this map, as I say, it's a very tactical, strat strategic map. You'll see that Lando is fighting uphill. And remember, um, on a Rome Total War, if you're fighting uphill, you have uh, the enemy team has got the downhill advantages and all that comes with that, the downhill bonuses. There you are. Lando's general's just been killed there, so he's lost his uh, general morale bonus there. 
and as I say he's attacking the Carthaginians head on now you can see the Carthage general now is bringing his elephants in as well okay and here over here you'll see Landula is now charging his cavalry uphill okay as I say this is a very tactical and strategic map you've really got to think about what you're doing here so he's going to charge his cavalry uphill looks like he may well charge into the flank of Uther's fully upgraded infantry and into those onagers as well okay but because he's charging uphill he's going to lose a lot of his bonuses there and also he's abandoning his infantry lap and now the elephants and the cavalry of Mantu can smash into the rear of his engaged infantry there well Mantu's um, spear units move forward into the infantry pinning and holding them there can you see Mantu's moving his Carthaginians his f uh, well upgraded Carthaginian spearmen into um, the, the SBQR troops there to pin and hold them now here as I say Lando's attacking up but look at the steepness of that hill so now he's lost probably most of his charge bonus now remember the charge bonus is the impact and penetration that a unit can do well because he's charging uphill look he's lost most of that charge bonus um, and of course the enemy on top of the hill there look, has got the downhill advantages now so charging up that's why I said this map is so tactical and strategic you have to be very careful um, how you move your troops around the battlefield here but I just thought as I say looking at Aurelius is pike fence there I thought that was a really good move and he's extended that pike fence look, over onto this hill helping my Spartans against the long pikes of Macedon just look at the long pikes there of those Macedonians there and uh, that's why I don't like putting Spartans just look how short the spears are of Spartans are that's why I don't really like fighting Macedon with Spartans because the long pikes there <coughs> really can make a difference when they uh, they come to the uh, the actual hand-to-hand -hand fighting here there but as I say over here you can see Lando charging there into the flank of um, Uther but over here um, I think unfortunately the writings on the wall you can see here that Lando's throwing pilers in he's turned a couple of his units there look, to face the threat of the elephants and cavalry coming in behind him there but he's being sandwiched between really well upgraded um, spearmen there Uther's got a cavalry unit in there as well so he's being attacked in the rear now look the Carthaginian spearmen are pushed forward into the rear and he could well get hit by elephants and cavalry coming in behind him there let's see so now his poor old infantry has been completely um, sandwiched and surrounded there look. and there you go so at this stage of the battle all of Lando's infantry has now been taken out so um, that was a nice uh, attack there by man two uh, pinning and holding with his spears and getting his elephants in behind the uh, and Lando's infantry there so um, that was a nice move there by man two but now all of our ally Lando's infantry has now been taken out so um, and now all these victorious uh, Carthaginian troops will now move probably up onto the hill to help their allies here let I say here the uphill attack that Lando threw in there probably didn't do a lot of damage look now he's attacking a little bit more up on top of the hill well actually he's still attacking uphill there rather than being on a flat ground isn't he so there but he's pulling his cavalry away from there which I think is a good move try and look for another target there now the problem is with all these onager fire pots coming in we know how um, inaccurate they are and I think my guys have already been hit by um, there could you see a fire pot just hit my Spartans there friendly fire pot there just hit my Spartans and that's the problem <clears throat> if we're using all our onagers here to fire over the heads of my Spartans and the Seleucid cataphracts there we know that these fire pots drop short so <clears throat> I'm very inaccurate so yes we may well hit the enemy with a few fire pots but the chances are firing over the heads of our own troops at the fire a lot of the fire pots are going to drop short and cause us casualties as well so it's it's uh, it's always best not to shoot fire pots over your allies. <gasps> See that fire pot there? A friendly fire pot there just landed right in the middle of one of my Spartan units. I see the um, the Seleucid general's moving his cavalry out the way now because you can see oh, oh that was a good shot I think we just took out the Macedonian general with a fire pot there so yeah the, a lot of the fire pots will hit the enemy but of course as I say because they're so inaccurate and they drop short they will 
uh, drop on your own sh troops if you fire up fire pots over their heads right just pause the game for a second here so this is a nice combination attack between Lando okay and Scorpion King there okay so you can see Lando's SBQR cavalry and Scorpion King's um, uh, Seleucid cataphracts there charging in that they've done a lot of damage there to the enemy Julio troops okay but once again if you look at it can you see our cavalry is down the bottom of the the hill there can you see and these enemy troops charging downhill will have the downhill bonus on our allies cavalry see they're fighting they're fighting downhill so our troops now are at the bottom of the the hill there if you like there's enemy cavalry approaching as well so what might be a good idea now is for our our cavalry to be pulled out of the melee there you see what I mean because otherwise um, in the position that they're in I think that's a very um, disadvantaged position there and if you notice here can you see that Scorpion King has seen um, the situation and is backing his cavalry off and moving them back into safety with all these enemy troops coming in okay coming downhill and enemy cavalry arriving as well so he's gonna back his troops his cavalry off but you notice Lando here is charging forward into enemy cavalry there and unfortunately I think in this position he's got a good chance of maybe losing all his cavalry there and if you look at the oh my gosh so now Lando's lost all his infantry fighting Carthage and has now lost all his cavalry so at this stage now the battle is a 3v4 okay it's three of us against four of the enemy now um, so I'm not uh, I'm not very confident that uh, <laughs> we're gonna do very well here I don't think but as I say we're still shooting fire pots over the top of my Spartans into the enemy troops but if you notice can you see that the Seleucid generals own cavalry has been hit by his own fire pots here can you see that the the the, the um, the, the, the scorched bodies there where they've been hit they were letting there's a group of my Spartans been hit by a fire pot as well so as I say it, it's great having this much artillery but uh, taking the risk of shooting fire pots over your allies troops uh, can be a very very double-edged sword as we've seen in other battle videos as well okay so you can see here my Spartans now against just look at the long pike and it's one Macedon there look. Uh, pikeman there just look at that and look how short my spears are in comparison to that length of the pikes there so just think of the advantage that those Macedonian pikemen have got over my short spearmen there let's say the fire pots are still coming in look so oh whoa, that was a good hit took out a lot in that Macedonian unit there but um, I'm a bit worried about the fire pots hitting my <laughs> Spartans there from my allies there so there you go you can see um, my troops moving forward I'm trying to be aggressive against these Macedonians you can see that Julius Caesar has got some of his Julii Roman troops attacking this hill as well um, this is a, a nice move here by a uh, mad king moving troops around the flank there that's a good move but here now we're concentrating our firepower onto Uther on top of this hill now you can see here that Mantu's victorious Carthaginian troops have moved over from our right flank after taking out Lando's infantry and are now up on the hill okay so now you can see and I can see some Julio troops moving forward here maybe looking to um, break Aurelius's pike fence there and try and get down to the artillery that um, a Scorpion King has been shooting into the enemy troops there but uh, you can see here Scorpion King moving his Seleucid cataphracts around the battlefield very very well and you can see as I say I'm trying to be aggressive with my Spartans here fighting the uh, whoa that was a good uh, fire pot hit trying to uh, force my Spartans onto those Macedonian pikes they're trying to push them down the pikes if you see what I mean there you can see the fully upgraded cataphracts of Scorpion King here now engaging the enemy Julii um, cavalry there so a very aggressive use of these cataphracts by Scorpion King um, as I say he's always um, been very good with Seleucid for many many years there now here you'll see the enemy Carthage spearmen there really oh that was a great fire pot you can see the uh, Carthage sacred bass were really pushing in to the uh, oh and they're a good fire pot hit there into our Seleucid ally but um, so the fire pots are doing well as long as they don't hit our allies and um, pikes 
there they're doing quite well meanwhile over here on our right flank you'll see that um, Aurelius is using his elephants there chariot unit and uh, cavalry there to chase down the Carthaginian cavalry units there you can see there I think that's man two's units there being chased by the elephants um, chariots and cavalry so um, that's uh, that's pretty good there for um, Aurelius hopefully you might catch them and maybe take them out but as I say over here on the hills here you'll see that the Carthaginians there are gradually making inroads into our Seleucid ally there remember Carthage punches above its weight when it comes to these big 121 man units and can usually beat them but here you can see a lot of my um, Spartan units are starting to rout now there you go that's a bad sign for us look you can see oh my gosh that's my general has just been taken out so my troops no longer have a general morale bonus but just look at this great battlefield awareness cavalry charge by scorpion king he's took his cataphracts in behind the enemy look and is now going to smash them in to the back of those enemy troops that just a great battlefield awareness charge there look. so what as he's doing that i'm going to move my spartans forward even more aggressively there to to try and go into the rear of those Macedonian troops that have turned to face the threat of the cataphracts coming in on them. Now over here you'll see that Uther's brought some of his Julii infantry over here to uh, attack my Spartans as well. But as I say, that was a great hit there by our, our Seleucid ally. You can see Julius Caesar uh, bringing uh, some more of his cavalry across here and uh, trying to kill scorpion king's general can you see scorpion king's general unit there the square banner there that's what the uh, enemy julii uh, cavalry are trying to kill okay let's just pause again for a second here so that's what they're trying to do trying to kill um scorpion king's general now this was a nice move there by macedon coming around the flank um over here you'll see that man too has now run down from the hill with his carthaginians looking to take out obviously our artillery units now that he wants to kill the honor crews and stop the artillery um i've got my archers there shooting into enemy troops but as i say the carthaginians now of man two will look to come down here and try and take out um scorpion king's artillery pieces there that have been causing him so many casualties there and there's another group of man twos um spearmen there as i say it wouldn't surprise me if they started to move down towards the artillery pieces of um scorpion kings to take them out okay and as i say uther's captured this hill there um he's got some of his own artillery there shooting into us but over on this hill here where my spartans were that was a great um help there by scorpion king's cavalry a good battlefield awareness charge looks like he's going to charge it again like a bang now can you see there he's got the downhill charge now look can you see he's got the downhill charge bonus um there penetration impact a lot more like when you charge downhill oh that's uh our Seleucid general has uh, just been taken out so that's bad news you can see him coming in from another side here look with his cataphracts there like a bang as he charges in there he's charging uphill yes there so he's lost a lot of his charge bonus there but it uh, wouldn't surprise me if those julii um cavalry soon routed now over here you'll see that um, myself and aurelius with his seleucid pikes have routed a lot of the julii infantry there but here you can see well done to scorpion king there took a lot of enemy uh, cavalry out there and enemy units there okay so let's just pause the game for a second here so as you can see now most of man 2's carthaginian army is now in the process of taking out our artillery they're trying to take out scorpion king's onagers here um with his uh, carthaginian army remember uh, scorpion king's been shooting loads of fire pots into the enemy troops over here you'll see that aurelius is still chasing down the carthaginian cavalry there with his chariots and his own cavalry trying to take them out so well done to Aurelius there um, but uh, over here as I say you can see that uh, Uther's brought a lot of his fully upgraded urban cohort Julii um, infantry over here now to attack my Spartans as you can see and remember urban cohorts fully upgraded really tough there you can see them moving in on my Spartans there plus I've got Macedonians in behind me oh that was good looks like I'm um, Aurelius's chariot units just taken out the Carthage general so that's good news for uh, for us right you can see that my um, Spartan units are getting sandwiched now 
between a fully upgraded urban cohorts of Uther and those Macedonian and those Macedonian pikemen coming in behind me there. So um, as I say, I can see a lot of my Spartan units routing now there, and I can see a Macedonian general unit coming back into the fray as well so it really is touch and go up here on this hill you can see i've up spears now and running my spartans downhill into the back of those urban cohorts so i just want to make sure that i got the downhill um charge bonus there and that so now my spearmen are charging now you can see there you are your scorpion king going to charge his cavalry and again look and bang as he charges those well upgraded cataracts fully upgraded cataracts into that Julio infantry. You can see I'm moving my Spartans forward as well to sandwich those fully upgraded urban cohorts between um, Scorpion King, Seleucid Cataphracts and my Spartans there. And we've routed a lot of Uther's infantry. You can see Uther bringing an Eagle unit over there look, to try and give more morale to his troops. But now Scorpion King's going to attack that Eagle unit. Remember the Eagle units are not so tough as urban cohorts. So there's a good chance of routing that Eagle unit, which we've just done. So well done to Scorpion King there. But you can see now that my um, Spartans, look if you can see, are fighting downhill now. Basically downhill towards the enemy troops there. Pause the game for a second. So over here now you'll see that I think most of our artillery has been taken out by Mantu's Carthaginian troops there. So that's a good tactical move by Mantu, taking out the uh, taking out our artillery there, which he's done very well uh, with his spearmen. I've still got my archers there. I'm still trying to shoot into those Carthaginians, trying to cause them as many casualties as I can. You've got Aurelius's cavalry here. He's moving around the battlefield very tactically, hitting enemy targets with his chariots and cavalry so well done to him you may well come up into the rear of those um, Julio troops possibly there <clears throat> but I think at the moment all I've got now is two Spartan units that's all I've got left there you are that's just those two units that's all that's the entirety of my infantry that's all I've got left now so I'm charging them into those Macedonian troops. They're really pushing them in there. You can see our Seleucid uh, cavalry attacking once again, causing uh, mayhem and casualties to the enemy troops there. So I think a combination of Seleucid pikes of Aurelius, my Spartans, and Scorpion King's cavalry there has managed to actually capture this hill. As I say, I just got two units, two Spartan units left. The rest of my Spartans are dead. But the combination, I think we played really well there. Um, you know, great battlefield awareness there by Scorpion King and Aurelius there. And as I say, we've managed to rout that big Macedonian army. Um, I think we've routed Julius Caesar's army there and a lot of Uther's units as well. So we've done quite well on that hill. So quite pleased with that. Now over here you'll see... That Aurelius is moving his Seleucid elephants towards the enemy troops. But what have I spotted there? Those incendiary pigs. Can you see the incendiary pigs? So it'll be interesting to see if um, <coughs> Uther is going to use them just at the right time. You need to use them just at the right time as the elephants get really closer and see what happens. But as I say, a man who's done very well here in uh, taking out our artillery uh, units. They're taking out the honor of the crews. So well done to... Um, to man two there with his Carthaginians you can see there I've still got my archer shooting into the Carthaginians there but they're so well upgraded I doubt very much whether I'm doing a lot of damage there so um, <clears throat> there we are as I say we captured that hill now now maybe the next objective is where Uther is on the other hill there maybe attacking over here now so we've got the complete high ground might well be um, a tactical good tactical move for us is what I'm thinking there. You can see Uther moving some of his infantry over towards the Seleucid elephants there of Aurelius. But just watch out for those incendiary pigs. See the incendiary pigs? Right, there's the elephants going in. Look, and bang! As they charge into Uther's infantry. They watch out for the incendiary pigs being ignited. Get ready for this. Right, they've been ignited. See the red banner flash above them? So, there you are. Look, Uther's just ignited those um, incendiary pigs. Now, It'll be interesting to see if the incendiary pigs run towards the elephants. If they run towards the elephants, they will cause them to run amok. But no, let you see the, the incendiary pigs now look are running all over the place. Now they're moving towards the elephants. Now whether they're going to cause it... There you are. They, they got close enough to the elephants, look, to run them amok. There you go, look. 
if you look, read the right and see, running amok. So those elephants now have been run amok by those incendiary pigs. So uh, that's, uh, that's how quick the incendiary pigs can work. You need to get them just really close to the elephants. So if you can, they actually run into the elephants there. Um, but there you are. So you can see that elephant's been run amok now by... Now, and those elephants are now killing their own Seleucid cavalry. You see, when an elephant unit runs a muck, it kills both friend and foe alike. And look at all those cataphract cavalry, probably just been killed by that run a muck elephant. But over here, you'll see we are now attacking Uther's Hill, if you like. The, the hill that he's been holding for the whole battle so far with cataphracts. I'm moving my two Spartan units over here as well. There. You can see my uh, Spartan units moving forward. I've got my fast-moving armoured cavalry general unit there, like as well. Bang, charging that in. But uh, yeah, so my um, infantry here is the only infantry of ours over on this hill. The rest of our um, troops are cavalry. Right, can you see here now that the cataphracts now are attacking that fully upgraded Julii infantry there? Okay. So what I need to do now is up spears and charge my troops into the rear of those enemy Julio troops in a sandwich attack. Let's see, hammer and anvil attack or sandwich attack, whichever you want to cause it there. And you can see my Spartans pushing in from the rear and the cataphracts. So here's Aurelius has got some cataphracts coming as well. Could just finish off that Julio infantry of Uther's and bang as it charges in there. Nice hit there. Just that one. Oh, there you are. And now we've routed all of Uther's troops on top of uh, the hill that he's been occupying from the beginning of the battle there so uh, we've done very well there in doing that so bearing in mind that we lost our ally at the beginning of the battle there and made it into a kind of a 3v4 i think we've done really well now you can see man two spearman there um, as I say, it looks like he's got most of the uh, the artillery of our artillery with his spearmen there but as I say, if you look at our troops, we haven't got a lot of infantry left. Yes, we've got um, some chariots, we've got some cavalry, but not a lot of infantry. And of course, those Carthage Sacred Band troops, uh, well upgraded spearmen there, will be anti-cavalry and anti-chariot. So we're going to have to be very careful how we uh, try and approach dealing with those uh, Carthaginian troops of Man 2 over there. You can see him moving forward now. But of course, we have now got the high ground, okay? Because we've taken out his allies there, we've got we've now got the high ground. And if he decides to move up the hill there, then of course, and, and we uh, we actually get to that hill and charge down. We of course will have the downhill charge bonus. You can see one of my um, onagers is still working there. So, um, but unfortunately, both those inaccurate fire pots missed. I've still got my archer shooting into those Carthaginians, though. Still trying to cause them um, um, casualties there. But uh, as I say there, you can see we've got, um, well, basically my Spartans there. And I, th and I think we've got to have a couple of battle damage Seleucid pike units. But basically, we're cavalry. That's what we've got here. And of course... Those Carthaginian sacred band, as I say, well upgraded, are anti-cavalry. So we're going to have to be very careful how we um, <clears throat> how we deal with this. Now you can see here, I think it's Scorpion King taking his cavalry, his very battle-damaged cavalry, down towards the Carthaginians here. Now it wouldn't surprise me if um, Mantu put his spears down and started to advance towards that cavalry, knowing that uh, the cavalry won't attack him there. There you are, you can see that uh, Mantu's got his spears down there, his anti-cavalry spears are down, and he's just walking towards the cavalry. It wouldn't surprise me now, you can see there that um, Aurelius is moving his cavalry around the flank, but uh, Scorpion King, I think, needs to move his cataphracts out of the way pretty soon there. He's like drawing the Carthaginians up the hill, and then he's going to move his cataphracts away, which is a good move there. But as I say, we're trying to get cavalry around the flanks of these Carthaginians here, I'm going to move my Spartans down. Let's say we've got some battle damage Seleucid and Pike units there. We're moving down towards the Carthaginians here of Man 2. So as I say, bearing in mind at the beginning of the battle, we lost our allies' complete army um, and made it into kind of a 3v4. I think we've done quite well here um, as a team. I think everybody's been playing it really well. But as I say, now we've got to think very carefully here how we're going to try and take out these Carthaginian spears, bearing in mind they're well upgraded and they are anti-cavalry. You can see they were charging a couple of um, Onager crew units there. 
into attacking them there and routed a couple of those Carford units you can see I'm running my Spartan units down there as well and you can see as I say some battle damage Seleucid Pike units there as well and as I say we got cavalry locked and loaded so maybe at the um, opportune moment the cavalry may well charge in there right you can see I've got my Spartans there now attacking the Carthaginian units you got the Seleucid battle damage pike units moving in there as well they're holding and pinning these Carthaginian units and maybe the cavalry may well be brought in behind the Carthage units there smash into the rear there you can see them charging forward get ready for this and bang and bang as they charge in there oh my gosh so we've taken out now all of man two's spearmen now so all the sacred band spearmen i think or most of them there may well be one or two left somewhere but the majority of them we have now taken out but just uh, here you can see that man who still got his armored elephants and as i say remember the armored elephants are the elite elephants of the game okay you can get secondary elephants without any armor on but the uh, the elite elephants are the armored ones there which are very difficult to kill okay so if we look all the way over onto the other flank you may well see a complete elephant unit of man twos there there you go there you can see there's a complete unit of man twos armored elephants there and bearing in mind all our troops are battle damaged tired or very tired um, fighting elephants with the fear factor that they bring and all the specification they've got could be very difficult here now you can see here that his elephants look like they're just stood there doing nothing but remember they got archers on the back of those um, elephants there shooting arrows into us now he can see I'm running my Spartans forward he may well back his elephants off he may not want to fight the um, the spears of Sparta there and you are let's see he's moving his elephant but as he's moving his elephants away the archers are still shooting into us off the back of those elephants see so and don't forget the big fear factor they're bringing as well so um, as I say with battle damaged troops which we've got um, here it's very difficult to tackle elephants meanwhile right over here I notice there's one Carthage spear unit there and I've got an archer unit that's run out of arrows now and that uh, Carthage spear unit there as you can see with eight upgrades on very battle damaged though so we may well have to go over and try and take that out but um, as I say this uh, this Carthage elephant unit the armored um, elephant unit here could well cause us a bit of trouble simply because it's um all our troops are so battle damaged and tired there you can see the the arrows there from the elephant shooting in to Aurelius is light cavalry there can you see that so he's causing casualties there even though they're not actually fighting like kind of hand to hand anyway right? charging those elephants in like a bang as they charge in there best thing for Aurelius to do is pull those cavalry away from the elephants there you see how these um i know some people say they they don't think the elephants are worth the money but in certain situations on the battlefield they can be very very well almost decisive i think actually there and as i say we're uh, trying to move towards that uh, to those elephant that elephant unit there but there is another elephant unit approaching us and as i say over here we looked at a bit earlier on that um that one a uh, battle damaged Carthage spear unit there and you can see we're moving cavalry over to try and take it out if you notice here I'm going to attack with my archers there and smash in with my battle damaged uh, armored cavalry generally and bang as we charge in there but that well upgraded um, spear unit there look of man who would hold there against my uh, my archers there but we need, just need to move cavalry in and around that um, that one spear unit there just to take him out as I say um, I think he was chasing one of my archers down that's the reason he's all the way over there but as I say this this elephant unit here of Carthage is going to be a problem for us I think and if you notice here I'm moving my archers forward because obviously what I want to do is to shoot fire arrows into that elephant unit now remember fire arrows um, scare elephants and can make them run amok if you hit them with enough fire arrows well that archer unit of mine is so battle damaged I don't think it's, uh, it can put the volume of fire arrows that it needs onto that elephant unit to make it run amok. Remember, if we can get that elephant unit to run amok, then that's it. Then he goes completely out of control of his general. And, um, and of course, it's no good really anymore 
um, to the Corsi's General. So we need to make try and make that run amok. Over here, let you'll see that Scorpion King is moving his cavalry round behind that uh, spear unit. This is the last of Man 2's infantry units here. This spear unit's the last one. So, as I say, Scorpion King being very careful how he's moving his battle damaged cavalry around there. Let's get ready for this. And bang! As he charges in there. Routed that uh, Carthage Sacred Band unit on impact. So that's good. That's the last of Man 2's units gone there um infantry units gone but as i say can you see i'm running that archer unit for now can you see that elephant unit is exhausted so its morale is very low maybe just one volume of fire arrows on that uh, that elephant unit might just be enough to run it amok now it's exhausted there can you see watch these fire arrows they could just do it because that unit is exhausted there you are can you see the banner on the flag there has just gone red so those fire arrows has just run that elephant unit amok there so that now that unit is completely out of control of its general and would just be running around the battlefield there so pleased about that that's that's a good move but over here you'll see that uh, Carthage light uh, cavalry unit there moving towards my archers there, I think he'd like to try and take my archers out there. So as I say, now, we've taken out all of Man 2's infantry. I think this is the last cavalry unit of Man 2's as well. If we can take that out. There you go, shooting fire arrows into it there. Seem to bring my general unit, my fast-moving cavalry general unit over there. And there you are, we've routed. So, to my knowledge now, we've routed all of the Carthage infantry and all of the Carthage cavalry. But, what we haven't routed is this elephant unit here of man twos now remember like we said before these armored elephant units are uh, the elite units of um the elephants there you say i'm going to put it onto double speed here because let's say we're a long way away from the elephants there maybe treble speed might be better there let's say we're a long way away from this now this elephant unit is an armored elephant unit and possibly could turn the battle okay so i'm going to say to you here this unit here possibly could turn the battle now because bearing in mind that uh, we've already got any infantry left so we've got hardly any anti-cavalry or elephant spear or pike units left mostly what we've got is cavalry and these elephants um these armored elephants are pretty tough there now he's only winded as well can you see that elephant unit is only winded where we are probably mostly at least very tired or tired here. There you are. Now you can see he's got the downhill elephant charge. Get ready for this. Like a bang as he charges into us with the downhill elephant uh, charge there. Like. So that was a bad mistake for us to allow ourselves to be below that elephant charge there. Can you see what I mean? That on this map, as I say, very tactical and strategic. But that was a bad move of us to put our units there to receive a downhill elephant charge. So there you are, like you can see those elephants pounding through us after killing loads of our units there. And there you are, like you can see. So this armoured elephant here of Carthage, look, which is just, you know, it's so tough. There, as I say, it could turn the battle here. You can see now he's going to charge into those cellular pointing before the points can be put down, like a bang! See the elephant smash into that unit there, causing great casualties to that unit there. And don't forget, as I say, the uh, archers on the back of the elephant shooting arrows into us all the time. There, look. And as I say, it's got the potential to possibly turn this battle around here. Look, look at them plowing through our troops there, look. And we're trying to uh, trying to catch it there. Moving my Spartans forward there, look. And uh, Man 2 is being very, very aggressive here. You can see I'm charging my armoured cavalry general. Oh, I managed to get one of the elephants there with my armoured cavalry general unit. Oh, that's pretty good. Pleased with that. You can see here as we're trying to charge cavalry into them as well. But as I say, don't forget those archers on the back of the elephant. And bang! That caught um, a couple of Aurelius' cavalry units there look, with the elephants. Routed those as well. As I say, this elephant's got the potential to turn this battle around if we're not careful. And there you are, you can see him charging down again, look. There's my Spartans running up towards the elephants. Must remember to put the spears down. Can't fight them with a secondary weapon, a sword. That's no good. There. <clears throat> but I remember at the time of the battle here, we were all so impressed by this armoured elephant unit. And as I say, some people say elephants aren't worth buying. Some people say they're just not worth the money. But I think when we watch this battle, 
um, it really did show how tough they are. Now he's just stood there at the moment, look, but his archers still shooting into us, still causing us casualties. You can see I'm running my Spartans forward there. I've got the spears down. Now you can see that he's doing a downhill charge, but this time we're a bit more wary. We're kind of pulling back, not letting him get to us here. Let's see, we're trying, oh, they still routed one of our units there. And then another unit, look, bang! Once again, look, we've allowed ourselves to be attacked downhill by elephants. Can you see what I mean? That's why this map's so tactical and strategic. With all the ups and downs on this map, you have to be tactical and strategic. Otherwise, you will pay the price. And you can see these elephants here are really enjoying the downhill charge. Routed another one of our units, look. Oh my gosh, as I say, this elephant has got the potential to be able to turn this battle around from what was looking like we were going to win to a possible loss here. Right, let's go to double speed. There you can see Man 2 moving his uh, elephants away. He may well turn to uh, to attack there. He's been very aggressive with his elephants. As I say, don't forget the archers there are shooting into us all the time. You can see, there you are, and now that elephant unit has run amok. And that's the last um, unit of, um, of Man 2 there. So... I thought it played very well there. So first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game there. I thought everybody played well. Guy, it was a great, uh, great battle. And you see, it was an average victory there. Actually, to be honest, looking at what we got left, I thought it'd be close. Highest kills in the game goes to a Scorpion King SR 1907. The excellent way he used his cavalry there, um, I thought was uh, a really good example there. That's very well done. So well done to Man 2. Look at the kills that he got. And that armoured elephant at the end nearly turned the battle around, didn't it? So maybe elephants are better than what we think, maybe. So well done to Man 2. Well done to Uther. Possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to there. But he was very aggressive with his infantry. Attacking on the other hill from where he was. Well done to Mad King. Possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to there. But he was smashed in the rear by uh, Cavalry. And Julius Caesar probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to either. But he was very aggressive. So well played, guys. Um, my kills, not too bad. Yeah, quite pleased with the Spartan kills there. That's quite good, as I say. Well done, Scorpion King. Highest kills in the game. Well done to Aurelius there. I like that pike fence he set up there to defend the artillery. And a well done to Landon. Probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there. But he was maybe over-aggressive at the beginning of the battle, attacking uphill. Not not really a great uh, great thing to do. And over here on the on the kind of the main hill here, where um, my Spartans and Seleucid pikes were facing that massive Macedonian army and Julius Caesar's Julio army and Uther's infantry that he brought over as well. Very tough there on that hill. So I hope you enjoyed this battle. Um, <clears throat> please leave us a comment or a thumbs up if you did. Bye for now.